Uh, but I'd like to welcome everyone to the president's uh, November town hall with students. Uh, this was a tradition in terms of multiple sessions a year that we started as we um, managed through going through the uh, beginnings of the pandemic and checking in with students and making sure that the president had a chance to hear students um, and have them share their concerns. So. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Tim Gordon. I'm the Vice President for Student Affairs, and I'm happy to serve as the moderator today. Um, and so I will turn it over to our president, Dr. Katherine Conway-Turner, who uh, will share some opening comments. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, great to be here with you. We have quite a few members of the senior team students here um, with you to answer any questions you might have. Here we are uh, barreling down to the final weeks of the semester, less than a third left of the semester. So I hope um, things are going well and that you're finding all the resources that you need um, and that you're sort of wrapping your head around those final projects that will be coming due in the next um, three to four weeks. Um, but just happy to, to be here and to hear from you. I hope you can both share how you're doing as well as any questions you may have uh, for the team to respond to. So with that, I will turn it back over to Vice President Gordon uh, to moderate any questions um, that come forth. Well, thank you. President Conway Turner. Uh, just want to remind folks in terms of how we'll manage. If you are not speaking, please make sure you're on mute. Um, and then also for anyone who wants to ask a question, you can either put that in the chat um, or raise your hand and a moderator, uh, one of the staff behind the scenes can unmute you to ask the question and let me know that you have a question. Um, and so um, just wanted to let you know how we uh, proceed. Well, well, we will proceed. So um, there were some questions that were uh, pre-submitted. And so we can start with um, maybe one of those. President Conway Turner, a student, did ask a question and wanted to know a little more about um, if we can make some modifications to the prayer space related to uh, folks uh, in meditation space, folks wearing shoes in that space, because for some students um, that may not be appropriate to pray in a place where there are outdoor shoes used. So that was uh, one of the first questions we got. Okay, so um, I know our Dean of Students is on the uh, line. So uh, might she wanna begin uh, responding to that? Sure, hello everyone. So yes, our prayer space and meditation space does not have a policy currently about shoes, but I think it's something that we can surely look into this week and next week as we move forward. We do have policies um, about the space already, so that is not something that we have taken the time to look at before or heard was a concern. And so surely Michael Heflin, our assistant dean for inclusion and equity, can go ahead and do that this week and make adjustments to the policy as necessary. So thank you for bringing that to us. And then Sarah, we will share the name of the particular, I think there were two students uh, that Michael could follow up with. Excellent, thank you. Any other questions in that vein before I move on to another question? Okay. Um, the other uh, question, President Conway Turner, that was submitted, or one of the other questions was um, around, uh, the question was, why did we eliminate all of the great dining choices uh, or food choices that students had? And so it's uh, pretty wide open, but uh, you know, maybe you'll want somebody to address how we make those decisions and uh, what, what changes we've made. Absolutely, and of course I'll uh, call upon our Director of Dining to talk about it, but uh, I have been really impressed with the variety of choices. So I guess I'm living in a different palette than the student is concerned. So Glenn, could you talk a little bit about some changes in dining, some of the new things, and maybe some things that went away? Absolutely, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so you know the changes that we've made this semester were uh, directly in response to feedback from students from last year. Um, and that is why we, uh, we brought two taco into the, into the fold to bring a, bring a Mexican concept back in. Uh, you know, we heard the students loud and strong last year that that was something that they were looking for. Um, and our number one sellers have always been um, buffalo wings and, and chicken tenders. So uh, we did enter um, 
into an agreement, a franchise agreement with Anchor Bar, uh, obviously the legendary uh, wing place to, uh, um, to bring them on campus to the first campus ever to have a Frank and Teresa's Anchor Bar. So that was, uh, that was in response to uh, feedback from the students. Um, and then we also, uh, with True Burger, part of, uh, you know, part of the calling that not only that we want to do, but that we hear from the students is always about food insecurity and, and how can we help. Um, and while we partner with, uh, with Milligan's Food Pantry on a number of different occasions, uh, we felt like really honing in on True Burger and being able to donate part of the uh, uh, 3% of the revenues back to Milligan's uh, was really a way to kind of uh, represent and, uh, and, and contribute even more than we have in the past to help fight food insecurity, while also driving the burger experience over there, moving to a, uh, a fresh Angus beef burger. Um, but we're always looking to understand what the, uh, what the needs are of the students and what the wants are, because they definitely change from year to year, and we always want to stay fresh and relevant. So we do have the Dine On Campus website. We have a feedback button on there uh, that comes right to me. We have a text to uh, chat number, which is uh, 800-4164. And that is a text right to my phone. So that could be on any suggestions that you have. It could be you're out of ketchup. Um, but it gives us an opportunity to react quickly. You can always email me. And then we've also got the food service committee meeting where we talk about um, really kind of future of what dining looks like. And uh, the next meeting is December 9th, um, but that's four weeks away. So I've invited students in the meantime to, uh, to meet one-on-one -on -one, and I have several meetings set up to just talk about what some of those needs are. So I guess the long answer is I, I want to know what what you want, and then uh, and then we'll always work to you know short of uh, surf and turf every day in the Bengal kitchen, um, we can make those changes, and uh, I look forward to making those changes and meeting the needs of the students. Well, Glenn, I do notice that you now have Jamaican meat pies. I've uh, gone over a couple of times, so can I just personally thank you for those? <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Any other dining related questions for the students that are on that you want to ask, you can either raise your hand or throw it in the chat. Give you a second. So while we're waiting, President Conway Turner, uh, one student did submit a question, um, concern uh, that they have some feedback that they wanted to share. And they really wanted to be able to share that about a particular area directly with you. And so, um, I will throw it to you to talk a little bit about sort of the process that you generally use to help students express themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, well, certainly we're always all here to uh, hear any concerns our students have, but typically if you have a concern and you've tried to handle it more locally, then I, your next stop would be uh, our Dean of Students. Um, and Dean Young is always available and ready to, to talk with you. Um, and, um, you know, if she feels necessary, she can then escalate it uh, to our Vice President Gordon as well. So, uh, you know, certainly there are lots of folks here to respond to any questions or concerns that you have. Uh, and I hope that you'll be able to, I don't know what sphere the concern is in, um, but, you know, start locally and then sort of move to Dean of Students to figure out the next best place to go to for, the, for your comment. Thank you. And just wanted to, again, if students have specific things that we've not discussed, weren't pre-submitted, you can either put that in the chat or raise your hand um, and a moderator will let me know that you are ready to speak. Um, so I'll give folks a chance to, to put that out there, either raise your hand or throw it in the chat. The quiet bunch today. Well, well while Tim, we're, if any of the students out there want to tell us a little bit about how they're doing, that would be, I would love to hear uh, how our students on the line are doing in their classes, uh, in the broader community, you know, just to kind of check, this is a check-in time. So I would really uh, like to hear from you if anyone would like to share um, how you're doing this November. Looks like Aaliyah has her hand up. So Amanda, do you want to unmute Aaliyah? 
Go ahead, Aaliyah. Hi, how are you? Doing well. Good. Um, my name's Aaliyah Small. I'm an RA um, in Newman. Um, I'm currently doing very well um, with my classes and also um, keeping up with the work as an RA with the residents. Um, I actually had a couple concerns. Um, I spoke to um, my complex, which is Bishop and Newman, and they had a couple of things they wanted to be addressed. They couldn't make it on here, so I did as a representation to them. Um, we just feel like a lot of the work that is being put on RAs, um, we don't have enough resources to do our job. And then on top of that, as first responders, we don't have the resources to do the things we need to do. Um, it also falls on Weigel and UPD sometimes because they don't show up in time for certain like um, student medical transports that happen. There's a lot of um, stuff that went on in, especially in Newman. Um, we were told that we had the most student transports um, due to the stuff that the students do in the residence halls. And it would take a while for a UPD officer to arrive or ambulance on campus. And there have been near to death situations where students felt like they had no one um, advocated for them. So us as RAs, we feel like if it wasn't for us, they wouldn't um, have a lot of these things concerned. And then um, as well as we had, um, we needed bathroom accommodations because people in both Bishop and Newman, um, the workers felt like their job was too much, I believe. And we, weren't, we didn't have soap in the bathroom for a couple of days. We didn't have um, toilet tissue, things like that. And us RAs came out of pocket to address these things and for the safety of our residents. So we just felt like the lack of transparency anytime we um, were to speak up, we weren't getting anything addressed. Well, thank you, Leah, for um, sharing those concerns and also letting me know that you are doing well um, in your classes this semester. Just to kind of unpack some of the things you said, um, mm -hmm. part of the concern was um, students that might have a health crisis or uh, that need a transport. So I, I do believe uh, Dr. Rock Doyle is on, could talk a little bit about the process and how that should work. Um, and then after that, perhaps move uh, to talk about some residence life support. And uh, I think I saw Phil on, yes. Uh, so wanna start with Rock. Sure, good afternoon. So to answer some of your questions, um, when we do a transport directly from Weigel, that happens from our physical facility. Um, we are an ambulatory facility. So a student needs to actually come over physically for us to have to do a transport. If there's a transport in a hall that's really handled through Residence Life and through UPD, um, so they're going to actually facilitate that prop process. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit more, Sarah, or Phil. I, well, I assume that most times, Aaliyah, the ambulances you're talking are happening after hours, which typically means during the RA hours through a call to um, our partners that we work with who respond to our campus AMR. Um, I can't speak to directly how long it takes because I haven't seen that concern in reports that I review. I review the PAVE reports. I haven't seen RAs share the timeliness of that. But okay. those calls do come into UPD and then UPD immediately calls AMR directly for students. And I don't know if Dr. B had something else to add to that. To and then I, portion about the ambulance. And I know VP Barnum is on and I'm not going, I'm not trying to speak for her or um, UPD that reports to her, but um, the interim chief, Amy Pedlo and I talk at least once a week and so um, about concerns that have come from the staff, both hers and ours. And so if there are things that have happened, and I say this to your professional staff who respond as well, but I know right. that um, they can't 
always speak for all of the things, right? Um, is if there are individual concerns that an RA has with something that's happened after hours, then my hope is that um, they're emailing someone about that, even if it's, if, and if you don't, right, if you feel like I've emailed this person and nothing has happened, then jump to whoever um, and feel free to email me because like I said, the interim chief and I chat regularly um, and work through these things um, or at least get me some context that may or may not have been shared at the moment um, that an officer may not have been able to share or like came around after the fact. Um, and I know sometimes she's just as frustrated because they don't have control over AMR's response time. Um, right. So I know there've been a number of calls where the ambulance has been very slow um, because the ambulance company was making their own decisions on prioritizing which calls they were responding to, um, which doesn't, right, which makes it challenging when you're the person on scene with a student who you're like, this person needs care and no one is responding and it's taking a long time. Um, so that's, that's my random, not random thought, but like there's some thoughts around the kind of after hours incident response, right. um, at least. I know there was something else that President Conway Turner wanted me to talk about, but I didn't want to move off of the ambulance before we had finished the ambulance. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Uh, and if you would just talk a little bit about sort of support for RAs in the dorm for various items that they need or just in, in general, that would be helpful. Sure. So um, I, I apologize for saying this again, but it, like if, if you ever have an issue that you feel like you keep bringing to your folks in your building and it's not getting fixed, then I want to know. So don't worry about who that person reports to and there's X organizational structure, what have you. Please drop me an email. Comment. I mean, sometimes coming into... I spend more time in my office now because there's still a lot of Zoom meetings, but right. um, if you can't find me, then just drop me an email and I'll make sure I find a time to connect with you um, or anyone. Like I would say that to, right, I'm saying that to you, Aaliyah, but I would say that to right. anybody. Um, I, I do know, um, and this is because um, the, the, um, I cannot remember her title. Her name is Mary, and she's essentially responsible for all of the custodial staff within the residence halls. Um, she did pop into the office at the end of last week, and there was an issue that was happening in Newman that was being misrepresented to her. Um, and she apologized to us for that, um, that the there were issues that were happening in Newman um, and that because of the way they were being shared, they were not being addressed appropriately. Um, okay. But as of Friday, she was over there giving some hard, to some tough love to the custodial staff of Newman um, in order to address those things. If they are still an issue, please let me know. Um, and there is, um, that did come up at the RA, um, the advisory forum. council on Friday that I, um, that I meet with once a month. Um, but I know that right. It's Tuesday. That message may not have been relayed to all of you in Newman and your staff meeting isn't until tomorrow, what have you. Um, but there were some concerns that, that, that did get brought up on Friday. Um, mm -hmm. and I was able to relay that. And so if that didn't get fixed on Friday, I know Mary was going back over there. Um, so she's probably still, on those folks, but if it's still an issue, then definitely let me know and we'll get it addressed. Like I know it got brought up, the soap got brought up on Friday. She actually went to Bishop and checked on a couple of bathrooms on Friday afternoon to make sure that there was soap in there because it was reported that it was consistently not um, having, that it wasn't present. Um, and we definitely don't want any RA ever feeling like it's reached a point where you're going to Wegmans to buy some whatever supplies. Um, right because that's not your, that's not your responsibility. You, you shouldn't be paying out of, out of pocket for any of those things. Right. So Leah, did we hit all of your questions? Um, yeah, I believe for the most part, it was just like, just 
basically the lack of transparency with the RAs and um, just trying to get our um, questions and concerns addressed. Um, we also had a very big issue with the Weigel and like how they operate. And um, one of our one of our RAs, and this is also like a student athlete situation, where they only do two physicals a day, which doesn't make a lot of sense because there's a lot of athletes on this campus and they do need um, some type of medical assistance most of the time. And they were turning people away. Um, and also in regards to COVID or being quarantined, um, they weren't getting any medical support if they were tested negative. So if they had something as uh, maybe a fever or things like that, um, they weren't getting any type of advice or support on how to get better or things to do outside of quarantine when they were finished. Okay, Rock, you wanna uh, respond to any of those concerns? Absolutely. Um, so for your first part of the question, which is physicals and sports physicals, um, we do try to fit in as many as we can possibly um, in a day. Now, sometimes that can be several, um, it can be 10, 20. Um, when, right. we have, when we do have sports clinics available, um, and those sports clinics are usually open during the time when um, that sport is, is going to run. We work with the coaches to get uh, in as many as possible. Um, students can also now receive sports physicals outside of campus, but we always try to do that. Um, of course, uh, our staff is tasked with managing COVID-19 for all students. Um, and of course, that does take up a lot of time over at the Weigel Health Center. Right. Um, you know, and managing, you know, thousands of students answering their trackers, et cetera, has to be managed daily. So that's something that we're doing on top of what we would normally do. So right. we try to manage that as best as possible. Um, as far as quarantine, you know, we do have licensed clinicians that are managing that. Um, they do provide uh, information to the students on self-care. Mm -hmm. um, especially when it comes to COVID-19 and also for fevers, et cetera, anything else. Um, I do know some students have concerns um, about contacting Weibo because they're afraid they're going to be put into quarantine. Yes. Um, I know that's, that's a big concern. And of course, you know, we're obligated to keep our student population safe. So, you know, if we do feel that they meet one of the criteria to go into quarantine, you know, we do do that. Um, our infection rate at the college, especially on campus, is very low, and that's because of the procedures that we put in place, and that, of course, is to keep you and everybody in the residence halls and on campus safe. So we continue to do that. If you do have any questions at all, um, I yes. ask that you, um, I put my email in the chat. Please copy and paste that. I would invite you to become part of our health and mental health forum. Um, so we can improve our services. We're always looking for improvement. And of course, that starts with student feedback. Right. So I, I thank you for that. And you know, if you're interested, I would love to have you on board. No problem. And Aliyah, also, I would encourage you to encourage others to um, reach out to him as well so that they can relay specifically their experience. Even right. if they can't make it today, there are lots of ways to be able to do that. The other project that I've tasked Dr. Doyle with is to... Um, really engage some uh, more in-depth focus groups around the experience that students have um, right. in Weigel, Weigel in general. So the health uh, advisor committee he referenced in his comments and in the chat will also be leading that with, which is a group of faculty, staff and students who provide us advice around um, that operation. So, so there are a number of things in work. So I, I guess I say that to say, we continue to hear that there's room for improvement and we're working towards that goal. also wanted to ask, um, are we allowed to get any like any extra masks and sanitizers for the desk? Because a lot of residents, um, we were told that the residents have to wear their mask and stuff in the, the residential buildings. And they don't, sometimes they may break or they don't have the resources. So if we can provide them at the desk, that would be helpful because we've been told that it's either we put the money towards that or our programs. I'm not how 
positive and true that is, but we felt like the safety of, you know, the students medically um, and as a community that we should have these things at the desk because it's necessary. Well, we have about 10,000 masks that we purchased. And, and what we talked about with the RA, in the RA forum is that if students don't have a mask, they can go to the union when the union is open to get that either off of the sign, which they're hanging there, or um, at the information desk. Uh, mm -hmm. Other pieces in terms of what can be made available in uh, the hall at other times. I, you know, I, I know we have dispensers in the building in the common areas. So, um, but Phil, I'll, I guess I, I would leave it to you um, to talk about any other process there. Yeah, I'll take a look. Um, but they are, they've, uh, as of even la from last fall, um, custodial had installed hand sanitizer um, stations in all of the public locations within the building and then have been filling them regularly. Obviously, like in a Bengal, they're in all of the elevator lobbies um, that doesn't work in Newman because there aren't enough there isn't no, there isn't an elevator really um Great. but I'll take a look um to make sure that there should be one right near the desk but I'll confirm and um can work with custodial to get them installed if we need to all right well thank you Aaliyah I really appreciate you sharing some really important uh, feedback on behalf of not only yourself, but other students to make sure that we continue to meet everyone's needs and keep everyone safe. Um, yes, thank you. Yeah. For those of you that are just joining um, or, you know, have uh, we are, if students have questions, you can either drop those in the chat or raise your hand and we'll go ahead and unmute you. So um, do let us know in the chat or by raising your hand if you have questions. So uh, President Conway Turner, while we're waiting, I think it might be a good opportunity to just talk in general about um, the wellness uh, opportunities and resources we have for students, because I know a lot of students have shared in different forms with me that they continue to certainly try to manage their mental health and their wellness uh, as we've moved into this new environment. So I don't know if you would like someone to talk about that, but that's another theme that I've been seeing. Sure, absolutely. So um, there are lots of uh, wellness opportunities on campus. And so I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Rock Doyle to talk about wellness in general and the many manifestations that come out of your area to keep our campus uh, healthy and moving forward. Absolutely. And I'm going to um, uh, talk about some general wellness and mental health in just a, just a few seconds. Um, but I would also like to start with um, some of my colleagues that are on the call to talk about some of the services that we offer here at the wellness centers. First, I'm going to ask Susan Johnson um, if she would be willing to talk about counseling. Hello, sure. <clears throat> oh my gosh, pardon me. <laughs> um, <clears throat> So I can send out the link for our workshops and our groups. Uh, the workshops are open, are wellness related, and they are open to all students. Uh, the groups are specific to students that are part of the counseling center. So, I mean, certainly anyone can come and be part of the counseling center, but as it's more therapy related, um, we do ask students to come in and do screening for those groups. So I can send out the list of those things. The, uh, counseling center link. Great, thank you. And Paula, would you uh, chime in about some of the health promotion and wellness programming we have coming along? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. I'm actually going to post a link right now in the chat to our brand new newsletter, as well as where you can find it uh, regularly on our website. So we'll try to send this out in the beginning of each month and it'll be hosted on our website. But what's nice is uh, you can scroll through it and you can see not only a list of our workshops and programs that are going on, but you can also see the flyers for each one that we usually have posted on our social media. And I would recommend to all students to uh, follow us on social media for 
up-to-date information just because it's easier to access in the event there's a cancellation or a location change, especially now that we have uh, to make sure that we're safe with COVID when meeting together if we need a larger space. Um, but we do have a lot of exciting programs uh, coming up and I'm always interested and open to hearing what other programs folks want to see. Um, but tonight we actually do have a uh, mindfully preventing screen time burnout with a lady from, who's actually stationed in California. It's at 7 p.m. on Zoom, but she is a massage therapist and uh, trained in mindfulness and meditation. Um, we also have this week a live Narcan training. We also are starting a new bike group with one of the professors, and that's for anybody, regardless of your ability to ride a bike. <laughs> um, a general meeting about that. Next week, we're going to have vaping and marijuana with Roswell, kind of talking about some of those issues, especially now that it's legal in New York. However, it's not legal federally, therefore it is not allowed our policy on campus. So we will talk to, about some of those issues. Uh, there's a flu clinic coming up. We're having a tourniquet training with ECMC. We do live cooking classes every Thursday night with the chef from the Buffalo Bills and the Sabres. So lots going on. And like I said, we're always open and encouraging to hear from other students uh, and folks uh, on what you wanna see. But we're trying to do also a hybrid of opportunities, both in person and online. Thank you, Paula. And just a couple other things. Um, we are in the process of adding to, um, a staff member to our mental health services, to our counseling center. So we're currently searching for um, an individual there, a senior counseling position. Uh, we also are adding to the fitness center. Um, for those of you that are members of the fitness center or go, um, we now have yoga classes. We're trying to do spin classes in the near future. And we're working on various other wellness um, things to go along with your physical fitness. So again, if you have ideas, my email is in the chat. And I encourage you to please, please, please be part of the wellness forum. We're here for you. Thank you. Well, thank you all. Any other questions folks want to put in the chat or you want to raise your hand to ask students? The president asked earlier for those of the, you that joined us if folks wanted to share how they were doing. She would love to hear that. So I also want to remind folks to share that as well. I'm not used to our students being this quiet. <laughs> All right, well, President Conway Turner, I will leave it to you to uh, share some final comments and uh, move on, move us forward, I guess. Well, thanks everyone for attending our open forum and uh, students, I hope you got the questions that you had answered. Um, and I hope you really took to heart all the wonderful things that are happening in the area of wellness. I think there's just so many different things uh, to keep you healthy and balanced and, and moving ahead um, throughout, you know, every day, but particularly as we move into these final weeks. And I know it's always quite stressful as you're juggling final classes and final exams and papers and, you know, internships and so forth. So, uh, do please continue to seek out healthy things to eat and healthy ways to keep yourself moving and healthy ways to stay in balance as you go through the final weeks of the semester. So it's great to see you um, on, on the screen today. And thanks to all of the leaders that are here that gave comments to our students. And I can say that everyone uh, is available for additional questions as you move forward. If just the question you're thinking about uh, strikes your mind five minutes from now. Uh, you know, those, these folks you're seeing on the screen are folks you can all reach out to. And, and we're help here to answer questions and, and to help you move through. So great seeing you all. Uh, happy November. I hear in about two days, we're gonna have a little nice day. So enjoy the little bit of warmth in November before the white stuff begins to come. So take care, everybody. 
And students, we will post this uh, recording for maybe your colleagues who couldn't attend, you want to refer to it. Also, I'll refer you to studentaffairs.buffalostate.edu for some great one-stop uh, resources to help you um, re-engage and take care of all of those wellness things we talked about, as well as a link to the Bowtie Chronicles, which uh, is a podcast where I'm interviewing students about, uh, continuing students about different tips and tricks that they have to be successful and other resources that they use. So I hope that you also share those and um, also continue to reach out as you need things. So thank you all very much. Take care.